A tricam is a simple, lightweight, inexpensive piece of gear that can act like a nut or somewhat like a cam. You can place it passively like a nut, simply slot it in a constriction in a crack, yank to set it in place, and that's good to go. Now, here's what a tricam can do that a nut cannot. If I fold that sling over the rounded side, now as I pull, it's rotating the tricam, wedging it ever harder in the crack. So I can do this in a vertical crack or in a horizontal. And I can do it in either orientation. This is also acceptable. What I'm looking for, just like in a nut placement, is the best surface area contact between metal and rock. I want to put it somewhere where it, it's going to stay. If I can fit it into a little notch or find a little pocket that it fits perfectly, that's great. When I'm not actually exerting force on it, it's just sitting there. Unlike a spring-loaded cam, it's not actually camming unless I start pulling on it. So a tri-cam wiggling loose as you climb past is a very real concern. You want to fit it in there really nice, but then you know that if you fall on it, the more load you put on it, the more it's camming itself in there. So that's a great piece of protection. Here in California, a lot of climbers like myself are just in the habit of using cams and nuts, and I don't even carry these things. But out east, climbers from Seneca Rocks and the Gunks swear by these things. They fit really well in the pockets and horizontal cracks out there. So another great option for rock protection. Here's a constriction that'll fit this tricam perfectly in passive mode. I place it just like a stopper, set it in there, and get the best surface area contact I can find and yank once to set it. That's great. I'll place this tricam in active mode in this vertical crack. I'm going to think about direction of pull. If I fall, I'm going to generate a pull that's out and down. So I'm not going to put it in straight in. I'm going to tilt it for that downward pull. And notice I have folded the strap over the rounded side for that camming effect, turning a downward pull into a push that way with the point. All right, I'm going to slot it in the crack. And just like with a nut placement, I'm going for maximum surface area contact between metal and the rock. That's good right there. Let me give a pull. Oops, see that shifted it a little bit, but now it's set. Now it's not moving, and I like that. This outward pull is translating through that rounded end into a push that way against the side of the rock. The harder I pull, the more firmly this thing is in there. To place this tricam in so-called active mode in a horizontal, I'll fold the webbing over the rounded side and throw it in there, get good contact against both sides of the crack, and then when I pull on the webbing as it runs across the rounded side, it is rolling the whole device and pushing the pointed side farther into the rock. The harder I pull, the more it's camming itself in there. For an active tricam placement to be safe, it must be within the safe camming range. You can picture that range by imagining the tricam as a capital letter T. The point is the stem of the T, and the cam rails form the cross piece. When that T is sitting nicely in the crack like that, a tricam is within the safe camming range. An undercammed or overcammed tricam, which is out of that good alignment, may not be safe.